Ah, uh, yes. The keys to happiness. Gotta use a key on these old cars. Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Today I want to do a little bit of an introduction to my Camaro Z28. Uh, you may have seen some other videos I have, a few videos I have of my Camaro but not too many. Most of the time it sits right back there deep in the garage where no one can see it. But today I have it outside right behind me as you can see and I'd like to go over a few things about my Camaro. It's a 1973 Camaro Z28 RS which stands for Rally Sport and I've had it since 1982. It's a fantastic car. Uh, it's like part of my life practically and uh, yeah let's take a look at it. So as I said it is a Rally Sport Camaro from 1973 uh, the way you can tell a Rally Sport, which was an option on Camaros at the time, was it had round turning signals above the bumperettes instead of below the bumperettes. And as I said, bumperettes, which were these short chrome bumpers. Whoop. Yeah, cat's always getting in the video. It had what some people call the shark nose. This is a urethane bumper. See, there's no chrome bumper across the front at all. It's all open. This is made out of uh, a rubber urethane, which is supposed to be able to take a small impact. Uh, it gives a car a very distinctive look. Uh, you'll never see a car like this on the road because, of course, with our bumper standards today, this car would never be built. But in 1973, they could still build them this way. So. This one came as a Z28. There you see the emblem. The Z28 was an appearance but also a performance package. Uh, in 1973 it came with a, a 350 cubic inch engine which is that one sitting right there. This is the original engine for this car. Uh, the previous versions from 70 to 72 were called LT1s. This particular one is very similar except they called it the L82 because of a few changes for 73. It had um, a quadrajet carburetor instead of a Holly, and it had cast iron uh, intake instead of aluminum and a few other small differences. For example, it was a hydraulic lifter motor while the previous versions were um, solid lifter. But otherwise it was very similar and produced a lot of horsepower for the day. So like I said, this is an original motor, but of course I've done some modifications, what I call day two or three or four modifications. It's got uh, hooker headers. It's got uh, a different manifold and a 650 Holley carburetor, which I can show you right here. Originally it would come with a nice chrome, um, it did come with a nice chrome air cleaner, exactly like what I have here. We'll just take that off. So I now have a nice 650 double pump per Holley carburetor. Originally would have had a quadrajet on a low rise cast iron manifold. This has got a higher rise aluminum manifold for more horsepower. But it does come with these really beautiful finned aluminum valve covers. These ones, particular ones are chromed. The original would have been cast aluminum that was uh, polished but chroming uh, sort of keeps the uh, shine longer than polishing the aluminum every year. It came with a nice flex fan, power steering, power brakes, and as you can see, Z28 wheels. These are the rally wheels. 
Uh, I think these also appeared on Chevelles as well, but uh, this came out new. These type of wheels, which looks like a five-spoke Krager, uh, came out in 1970 and lasted for quite some time. So this one still got its original wheels and original hubcaps. Uh, the car came with 11 inch disc brakes in the front, drum brakes on the rear, oh, and there's another Z28 symbol. Let's see if we can see that. Yes, there we go. Now this car, we'll just get the exposure correct here, is a nice red. Very beautiful. As you can see, it's kind of a cloudy day but the paint is still very, very beautiful. So as I was saying, there we have the Z28 symbols on the side to show that you've got a high performance Camaro of the year. For 73, they also had the streamlined uh, side mirrors. And the RS option also included hideaway wipers. On the regular Camaro, the wipers could be seen above the hood when the hood was closed. On the RS Camaros, they have an extra lever which sort of pulled the um, wipers down and had them hidden. The Rally Sport option had uh, some extra trim pieces. The chrome trim on the end of the hood here came with the Rally Sport option. Uh, regular Camaros didn't have any trim here at all. And this trim is carried on on the fender and then on the top of the doors all the way back. Uh, regular Camaros did not have this trim. This, so this is a Rally Sport uh, optional trim. Came with the Rally Sport option. Also, as you can see, it had the runway stripes that go on the hood and on the rear deck lid. That was a Z28 option that came with the Z28 package. And something a lot, a lot of people know is, of course it has a Z28 emblem at the back. For 1973, it was a decal. It was a decal. All the other years had a chrome, um, chrome metal emblem that was put on there. But this is actually a decal. They did that for 1973. That's also kind of a rare thing. Rear tail lights with an extra chrome surround that shows that it's a rally sport as well. Just a little detail. And of course, the really nice chrome bumpers that fit rather tightly to the body would never pass bumper laws nowadays. And a nice dual exhaust, one on this side. And of course, right there. Gives it a real mean, real mean look. Uh, another thing for 1973, they included these rubber bumpers on the ends of the uh, actual chrome bumper. This rubber cushion, this is for 73 only. A very rare thing to see them still on the car at this time. And also the very large spoiler. 1970 had a one piece spoiler that only went up about this high. 1973 and other years had the three-piece spoiler have a an end cap over here and of course the big spoiler end cap here and that was really done to actually make the car more aerodynamic on the tracks this spoiler actually works at high speed it actually gives downforce to the back and keeps the car on the track because by 1973 these cars were actually on the track and winning races in Trans Am as well as other types of sporting events. So let's get an overall view of the car. You can see that it's very sleek. This car was designed purely as a design exercise. Uh, is when you could still make a car beautiful without having to worry about too many regulations. Uh, it's got a fastback with the cam back where it's got a sort of truncated back end. That's called the cam back. A nice fastback, a true fastback, not a three quarter fastback. And one piece, one piece side glass. And as you can see, the doors are enormous and they weigh 
I think they weigh like 150 pounds. These doors are so long and very heavy. Uh, the interior is pretty simple, 1970s type of interior. Uh, as you can see, you've got basic carpet, a basic bucket seat, a small back seat that some people could fit into, as long as they're not too big. Um, but an important thing is this. This is a Hurst shifter attached to a four-speed manual transmission. Definitely the way to go if you wanted to buy and get a muscle car in those days. Now this car has an aftermarket wood steering wheel. The original steering wheel was all black vinyl. So I've added this just to sort of spice up the interior a little bit. It's also got an aftermarket radio which should be replaced with something that looks more period correct. This car, let's see if you can see, has some extra vents on the bottom. And now that would be because it's an air-conditioned car. That's also why it has these vents in the center. A lot of Camaros from this era uh, have a dash pad that has no vents right here. This has vents because it's an air-conditioned car. And there's the air conditioning right there. That's the part of the air conditioning equipment. A car that has no air conditioning will have none of this here at all. It'll be a lot cleaner. Also, normally it would have hoses coming from here, going across the motor, and connecting to a compressor that would have gone right here. Uh, I removed that back in 82 in the idea of reducing weight to increase the performance of this car. And of course, now that these cars are valuable, I'm thinking of adding it back on. Now, some people are going to say that, well, Z28s didn't come with air conditioning. Well, they did in 1973. Uh, because the motor had a slightly lower red line, they thought it would be okay to have air conditioning on Z28s. And so, 1973, you could order a Z28, like this car, with the Rally Sport front bumper and air conditioning. It's the only year where you can have all those options together. Z28, air conditioning, Rally Sport. The only year. So, let's have a look inside. Standard wind-up windows, although uh, power windows were available. Now this dash panel, let's see, uh, it's got fake wood grain with chrome accents. Um, I believe this is a 1973 year only dash panel with cr uh, fake wood with the chrome accents. Mine's looking a little worn out because I'm having trouble finding um, a replacement that's exactly the same as the original. Uh, this car has pretty good instrumentation for the year. Uh, for American cars. It's got your temperature gauge, a clock that doesn't work, a tachometer, which if you can see, uh, red lines at 6,000 RPM, which is pretty good for a V8 from the 1970s. That was definitely high performance back then. Uh, it's got a speedometer and gas gauge and amps. The one thing that is missing that a performance car should always have is oil pressure but uh, that wasn't too common in American cars of the time so it does not have an oil pressure gauge. Another thing different, it, as you can see it has the heater and air conditioning controls here and as this was an air conditioned car it has AC right there where you could choose it. That makes this different from most Camaros from that time. And a remote control for the driver's side side mirror. Also has a center console that originally came with this car in really good shape with the little storage cubby right there and the Hurst shifter with the traditional white cue ball shifter knob. So the visibility of this car is pretty good. Uh, 
yeah, the visibility was pretty good on this car. You could actually see out pretty good. Um, it did have some pretty serious three-quarter blind spots, as you can see, and the side mirrors were not too useful for helping with that compared to a modern car. This car has a perforated um, headliner. Don't know if you can see that. A perforated headliner with no seams in it at all. Smooth right away across. This one's not in perfect shape. There's the dome light. And nice chrome door sills in very good shape. Body by Fisher. These bucket seats are, they don't hold you in too good. They're better than the 1970 bucket seats, but they don't really help you too much. Uh, they're comfortable enough though. And also they don't, they don't recline. Like any modern car, you can recline it, get the perfect seating position. These ones do not recline, which makes it hard sometimes to get the, the perfect driving position. And we can see underneath the car here, uh, you have some air conditioning paraphernalia and what you got to see the three pedal design But as you can see it's not made for heel and toe They didn't really worry about that too much in those days So all the pedals heights are all different not really making it that easy a car to drive for If you want to do some fast shifting or heel and toe work So all in all a pretty pretty nice place to do business So like I mentioned, it's got drum brakes at the rear, so not really a, a high performance type of setup, but a pretty good performance for the day. And what would be considered a very archaic, primitive suspension system, simply leaf springs, a solid axle, and the only thing to do with performance is that the Z28 had a rear sway bar and they were quite, uh, quite thick in diameter. So that's what gave this car some performance. Um, yeah, so it was a fairly uh, good suspension setup for the time. It definitely could handle well compared to most cars of the 1970s. And this car still handles pretty good, con even compared to modern cars. But yeah, definitely an archaic design nowadays. As you can see, it's got some pretty big mufflers and this car sounds pretty good. Anyway, that's a little overview of my 1973 Camaro. Uh, like I said, I've had it since 1982. It's uh, back in looking mostly original as it would when someone picked it up in the showroom. Uh, also, you might notice that it looks a little low. It has been lowered. A lot of the 1970s cars uh, look a little bit too high. They got too much gap. So this one has lowering springs front and back and that lowers the car maybe about two, two inches. And I think it just really makes the car uh, hug the ground, makes the car's proportions a little bit better. So this is the original color with the original options from 1973. And unlike uh, a lot of modern cars where all you see is a bunch of plastic covers when you open up the hood, in this car, you see the motor. And the Chevy motors were looking pretty good back then. You could actually see what's actually making your car go. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty nice in there. And since this motor was also used in Corvettes of the era, it has a Corvette symbol on the valve covers. And these original rally wheels were 15 inch by seven inch wide. And the tires I currently have on it are P24560s, R15s, which were a little bit bigger than what would have come stock on this car. Uh, I think it just sort of fills out the wheel well a little bit better. Oh, I forgot to mention also this car came with the optional front spoiler as a spoiler package together with the larger rear spoiler it also has a front spoiler as well now this car also had a larger radiator than the standard Camaro 
very large and as you can see this is the original engine decal and it says 350 cubic inch high performance there you go and it gives the rest of the timing information and tune-up information right on this decal this is the original decal that came with the car and one other thing that makes the 1973 RS different from all the rest and it's a way to identify whether or not you have a 73 rally sport is that the regular Camaros do not have these reinforcing plates on the hood latch as well as this reinforcement here this was all put in to help the car uh, meet the 1973 bumper crash standards which it just barely did and allowed GM to keep the uh, urethane bumper for one more year and in 1973 they switched the whole front end to put a large bumper up here but for 73 with the help of this bracing here bracing here uh, on the front end they allowed them to keep the rally sport option for one more year this car also has the full length chrome trim on the very bottom of the rocker panel uh, quite a few 73s have a, a three-piece trim that goes up a little higher but this is the one-piece trim goes down the whole side of the car so if you have any questions about this car, just uh, leave a comment below and I'll answer it for sure. Anyway, that's a little introduction to my 1973 Camaro Z28. Thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. See you next time.